Okay, okay, what an awesome day to be alive. How much better can it get than a hot cup of coffee? A better life coffee? My nephew from Ohio, he gets coffee out of uh, Central America, South America, and it's called Better Life Coffee. He supports an orphanage down in, in I believe it's Nicaragua, and his, when you buy coffee from my nephew, Mr. Joe Heatwall, the money goes to support a bunch of children, a school, and it's awesome coffee. So uh, check out Better Life Coffee. What I want to talk about today is, uh, is there's so much bad news everywhere. Every place you look. I mean, you can go, there's these these uh, little clips people sent me on Facebook Messenger, how bad things are going to get and, and uh, how horrible they are. And this is going to happen in September and this is going to happen up in October, November. All them things, I'm not even promised this day. I'm not promised tomorrow. I can't do anything about yesterday. But what I can do is this very moment that uh, God allows breath in my lungs, I can uh, program these ears, these eyes, I can program them and I can have an awesome day today. Not ignoring things, not uh, walking in the dark, but walking in the light. According to light, uh, the Bible says that we have, we live the natural span of <clears throat> life is three score and ten years. If by strength some people live a little bit more. So I know by that that I am three quarters, past three quarters of my life is already spent. Then I'm going to leave my fiddle behind. I'll leave my mandolin behind. I'll leave my uh, T5Z Taylor guitar behind. I'll leave everything that I've worked for on this life, in this life, behind me. It is a fact. The things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. But there are some things that I'm not going to leave behind. And the number one thing I will not leave behind is what I have done for my fellow man. What I have done for Jesus. The things I will not be, I cannot leave behind is love. Love is the only thing that transcends this life into the next and lasts forever. In fact, is if you go to uh, 1 Corinthians 13, it says, you know, if I give my all my goods to feed the poor, if I give my body to be burned as a martyr, and I don't have love, I am nothing. But I'm not going to talk about uh, 1 Corinthians 13 here this morning. I want to uh, read to you a little bit out of the Passion Bible. My wife, my awesome wife, my partner for 40 years has uh, given me a Passion Bible, and it so opens up God's Word. It's really incredible. So I want to read to you a little bit today from Hebrews chapter 1. Just before I start, I just went through the entire book of Exodus, how God made promises to people, how he delivered them, but every single time the people ran into a few hardships, they didn't believe God. They went in unbelief, and uh, God said he's going to deliver them, and he did, but the second things went a little bit south, they complained and wanted to go back to Egypt. I do not want to go back to Egypt. I do not want to complain. I want to run this race because I know in my heart of hearts that what God has promised to me, he will do. Every single thing he promised He for us, he will do. And if we focus on these things, on the good, the pure, the lovely, we can have an awesome life. I'm responsible for the things I can change, but I'm not responsible for the whole world. I am not responsible for all the troubles that are in this world, but I am responsible for my realm of influence. 
So what can I do to change the realm of my influence? Hebrews chapter 1 in the Passion Bible. Throughout our history, God has spoken to our ancestors by his prophets in many different ways. The revelation he gave them was only a fragment at a time, building one truth upon another. But to us living in these last days, God now speaks to us openly in the language of a son. What is so awesome about our God is <clears throat> he calls us his brothers and his sisters. We have a family relationship with our God. He doesn't treat us as orphans. He doesn't treat us as somebody way out there. He treats us as sons and as daughters, part of his family. So, but to us living in these last days, God now speaks to us openly in the language of a son, the appointed heir of everything. For through him, God created the panorama of all things and all time. So God has appointed us heirs with him. In other words, Jesus has an inheritance where God told him, Every single thing that there is belongs to him, and he has taken us into his inheritance, and he said everything that belongs to him belongs to us. What an awesome future to look forward to. And the things that God has, is going to give us and has given us, we can never lose. Like I said before, every single thing here, I have to leave. But the place where I'm going to, my inheritance is forever and ever. Incorruptible, undefiled, it never fades away. The sun, meaning Jesus, is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor. The exact expression of God's true nature. Jesus is God, but he was manifested as a human man. He became one of us. Okay, His mirror image, Jesus is God's mirror image. He holds the universe together and expands it by the mighty power of his spoken word. Think about that. The sun, the moon, the stars, everything stays in its formation by the word of God. In fact is, the life that's in our blood is God's word keeping us alive. He has decided exactly how many breaths I get to take. And when that's over, it's done no matter what. There's no amount of money that I have or anything that can buy one extra breath. God has decided and his word is the life that's in my blood. They can take blood and they can duplicate it scientifically, but they cannot give it life. God's word is life. So what's very comforting to me today is that my life is in his hands and he decides exactly what to do with me. That's not my option. That's his. He accomplished for us the complete cleansing of our sins. He washed all my sins away. And if we don't believe that, we do God the biggest disfavor. We say, God, your sacrifice was not good enough to wash all my sins away, and therefore I must do this and that and every other thing. And really, folks think they're doing God a favor by just saying, oh, I'm just this wretched, no good sinner. God, forgive me. God already has forgiven you. God already has established you. God is ready. He's the perfect sacrifice. It's not like it was in the Old Testament where people sacrifice every year and their sins are put off another year. Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. He is the once for all sacrifice. And when he gave his life and shed his blood for the forgiveness of sins, he went and sat at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. And I thank you, Jesus that all Sam Hofer's sins are completely washed away. There was many, many of them. And 
He today is my lawyer in heaven, sitting at the right hand of all power, and he intercedes for me. But if any man sins, First John says, we have an advocate. We have a lawyer in the heavens. So we have Jesus as our lawyer. We have the Holy Spirit praying for us with the groanings that cannot be uttered. And we're right in the middle. We have been given every single thing we need to be able to end this life in victory. It's there by believing. There is no gift on earth that is more precious, more sure than that. So, he accomplished for us the complete cleansing of our sins, and then he took his seat on the highest throne at the right hand of the majestic one. Today, the man Christ Jesus, who come and lived his life as a man, is sat down at the right hand of the Father with all power. Jesus Christ is infinitely greater than angels. Angels are powerful. One angel is going to come and put his foot on the land and the sea and he's going to sound a trumpet and the dead are going to raise and he's going to say that time will be no more. And we just, when Daniel seen an angel, his knees knocked together and he, all his strength left him and he fell on his face. That's just an angel. But Jesus is infinitely greater than the angels. For he inherited a rank and a name far greater than theirs. For God has said unto, for God has never said to any angel what he said to Jesus. And this is what God said to Jesus. You are my favored son. Today have I fathered you. And this, I will be the father to him and he will be the son to me. And again, when he brought his firstborn son into the world. Let all my angels bow down before him and kiss him in worship. So we do not worship angels. Angels are simply ministering spirits that God has ordained to do his work. And Jesus Christ is far greater than any angel. He is greater than anybody. He alone is the son of God. He alone created all things. God used Jesus to create everything that's created. So, about his angels, he says, I make my angels swift winds and my ministers fiery flames. But about his son, he called him, he called him God, saying, Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever, and you will rule your kingdom with justice and righteousness. For you have cherished righteousness and detested lawlessness. For this reason, God, your God, has anointed you and poured out the oil of bliss on you more than on any of your friends. So God has honored Jesus above every name that is ever named. And Jesus has the oil of joy above his friends. A lot of people think when Jesus was here, he was just sober and like in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was just crying all the time, Oh, Father, remove this cup from me. But there's nothing, nothing that indicates that. Several times in Scripture it says in the King James that Jesus Christ had the oil of joy above his fellows. He was the happiest guy to be around. When they didn't have wine, he made wine, fermented wine. He made the best wine. He was not afraid to party. He was not afraid to be with uh, sinners, yet he did no evil. Every place he went, there was redemption and love in his heart. And uh, he wasn't this, this sordid, long-faced, baptized in lemon juice person. He had the oil of joy above his fellows. And God gave Jesus everything that is in creation. And Jesus says, look, guys, you can be part of this inheritance with me. God gave it to me, and I'm giving it to you. What an awesome, awesome inheritance. Um, can you imagine missing out on such a glorious inheritance? And then he talks about Jesus. He says, Lord, 
you formed the earth in the beginning. So he gives God, Jesus here, the glory that he made the earth in the beginning. And with your own hands, you crafted the cosmos. The, the stars are the work of Jesus Christ's fingers. He made me. He made my eyes with the millions of uh, nerves that I can see, that I can look into this camera. <clears throat> he made my body, my organs, everything in me, my cells, that each one of my billion cells can reproduce another one of me. I uh, take the genetic codes that uh, when... Uh, <clears throat> husband and wife come together and have a new baby that it can throw back to uh, look like some uncle or some aunt in the past. And God did all this, and uh, it is marvelous, and science just works hard to even understand it. Then right beside my body, he made a uh, banana tree so that uh, I can get potassium and apples and the food that my body needs. And here's how good God is. He made everything before he made man so there would be a provision. There would be a provision for everything we need. Lots of folks today, this is just what's coming to my mind, we work so terrible hard to make things work and we don't come to God and say, okay God, I'll work hard. But... I will give you honor and praise and glory for everything I have so I don't think that anything I have, Sam Holford did it. No, no, no. When we give our finances, when we give our marriages, when we give every single thing we have and we say, Lord Jesus, I live to honor you. Everything I have does not belong to me. It's yours and I'm just a steward. Things change. You're able to pay your bills. Uh, God knows every single thing. He knows every hair on our head. He's acquainted with all our ways. So there's nothing that God doesn't know. And if today we're having hard times <clears throat> and things are going really tough for us, God knows it. God knows everything. And He cares. And every single person that God ever used in this life, he had to first build character in him. Uh, uh, king David was anointed king, and then he ran for his life while Saul tried to kill him out of jealousy. Daniel was in the king's palace and ended up in the lion's den. Joseph, for 13 years, every time he did what's right, first they threw him in a pit uh, out of jealousy, then he goes down to Potiphar's house, and Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him. And for doing what's right, he ended up in prison. He goes and interprets the dream of the butler and the baker. What happens? They forget about him. I mean, for doing right to go down, down, down. But then one day, for doing right, he did not compromise. He kept doing what's right in hard conditions. And one day, he became the ruler of all Egypt. Jesus came here to suffer and die, and he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings forever. And this life is not about accumulating all kinds of stuff that we have to leave. This life is strictly to test and to build our character so that forever in the new heaven and the new earth, we can have an inheritance with Jesus Christ and know what to do with it and know how to take care of it. Okay, Lord, you formed the earth from the beginning, and with your own hands you crafted the cosmos. They both one day will disappear, but you will remain forever. They will fade like a worn-out garment. Can you imagine me, Sam Hofer, my spirit, and uh, with a new body, is going to outlast the stars, the universe, the sun, the moon, and forever in this new body, I will be with Christ. Death will be defeated and it will be impossible to die. All tears will be wiped away from our eyes. What a glorious place we're going here very shortly. And the Bible says we will get there if we continue faithful to the end.
It says, and they, the stars, sun and moon and stars, they will be changed like clothes. You will fold them up and you will put them away, but you are I am. You never change. You have years without end. You have always been, you are, you always will be. And God never said this to any of his angels. Take your seat next to me at my right hand until I force your whispering enemies to be a rug under your feet. Right now, it, things look like they're chaos all over, but Jesus is not in heaven wringing his hands. Jesus is not, oh, I'm so worried. He's not sweating it. He's just letting everything play out. He could send just one angel and whip everybody into shape, but then he would have to, uh, he would uh, go against their free will. So he is letting our free will and the choices we make to carry on until he says, okay, angel go, tell him this is it. And then he's going to bring into judgment every single thing that man does. He's writing right now. The Bible says, and the books are going to be open. And the book of life. So today we don't rejoice that uh, we can uh, cast out devils. We don't rejoice in anything. Jesus says, rejoice in one thing that your name is written in the book of life. And if our name is written in the book of life, and if we send our sins beforehand to judgment by believing in Jesus Christ, they will never be mentioned or brought up again. It says some men's sins go beforehand to judgment, and some men's sins follow after. And today, believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in his finished work, and he is going to win. And all his enemies and everyone who hates him they're going to be like a rug under his feet. It says all things are going to be put under him. And the last enemy that's going to be destroyed is death. And he already defeated death when he rose from the grave and his body never decomposed. So when this life is over, we are going to rise, have a brand new body, and live forever with an incomprehensible inheritance a reward by trusting in Christ okay what rule then do the angels have the angels are spirit messengers sent by God to serve those who are going to be saved so here's a warning not to drift from the truth this is why it is so crucial that we be all the more engaged and attentive to the truths that we have heard so we do not drift off course. I just thank God for today. You know, we can drift off course by simply being too busy. We can drift off course by uh, getting focused on the wrong things. There's a thousand ways to drift off course. But if we stay in God's word, it will keep us on course. So, um, this is why it is so crucial that we be all the more engaged and attentive to the truths that we have heard, that we do not drift off course. For if the message of the law spoken and confirmed by angels brought a just penalty to every disobedient violation, how shall we escape punishment if we despise the very truths that give us life? How shall we escape punishment if we despise the very truth? You know, if we're just focused on this life, which everybody, saint, sinner, unbeliever, devil, everybody knows you can't take a thing with you. So then why do we fight over it? Why do we get bent out of shape over it? We shouldn't. Let's focus on the things that are eternal. Let's focus on the promises that are made for us so that when we leave this life, we can say, here I'm coming, Lord Jesus. And it's so exciting to be 60 years old. It's so exciting to be three quarters there and to know that things are going to get so astronomically, indescribably good that in this body, 
if we could, if we'd see our inheritance, we would not be satisfied living here anymore. Have an awesome, awesome day. And uh, trust Jesus and look to him and set your affection on things above, not on things of this earth. Have an awesome day and think about positive things. Think about good things. Go into the realm of your influence and do a good job there because that's all you can do. You cannot take the weight of the world upon your shoulders. It's far too big. But I can go out today and do the next right thing. God bless you.